Hello everyone, welcome to Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. My name is Vibhati and in today's session I'll discuss a physics paper with you of All India Test Series Grand Test. So let's start with question number one. End divisions on the main scale of a vernier calipers coincide with n plus division of the vernier scale. That means n msd are n plus 1 vsd. If each division on main scale, that means one main scale division is equal to A, then the least count is. So, over here, VSD is equal to N divided by N plus 1 MSD, which is A. So, least count is what? MSD, 1 MSD minus 1 VSD. So, it is A minus AN upon N plus 1, right? So, this will give you uh, N A plus N minus a n upon n plus 1 right so this is n upon a uh, this will give you a yeah so it is a upon n plus 1 which is option 4. Next is this one initial velocity with which a body is projected is 10 meter per second and the angle of projection is 60 degree find the range so over here this is 30 degree this angle is 30 degree this is 10. So, if you take the component of velocity, this component will be 10 cos 30 degree and this component of velocity perpendicular to projectile is 10 sin 30 degree. Similarly, this is g. Now, if you find this angle, this is 30. So, this will be 60 and this is again 30 degree. So, this is g cos 30 degree and this is g sin 30 degree okay so 10 cos 30 degree is what 10 root 3 by 2 which is 5 root 3 and 10 sin 30 degrees 10 into 1 by 2 that is 5 this is g sin 30 degrees 10 into 1 by 2 5 and g cos 30 degrees 10 root 3 by 2 that is 5 root 3 meter per second square okay we have all the components of v and g now um for finding the time, the range, the displacement, the displacement along the incline uh, will be equal to range and displacement perpendicular to the incline will be 0 for complete motion, right? So, we can write uh, displacement is equal to 0 that is uh, velocity perpendicular to incline which is phi t minus half a t square a is phi root 3 into t square. So, this will give you, this will give you time as 2 upon root 3 seconds, okay. Now, you have time, put it um, in the equation S is equals to ut plus half a t square along the incline. So, here range is ut which is phi root 3 into time is 2 root 3 minus half, minus because this component is anti parallel to initial velocity, a is phi into t square is 2 upon root 3 whole square. Right, so this will be um, this will be root 3 root 3 cancel 10 minus 5 into 4 divided by 2 into 3 that is 10 minus 10 upon 3 that is 20 upon 3 meter which is option 4. Next is this one a 40 kilogram slab rest on a frictionless floor as shown in the figure. A 10 kilogram block rest on the top of it okay the static coefficient of friction between the block and the slab is 0.6 while the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.4 TK coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.4 the 10 kilogram block is acted upon by a horizontal force of 100 Newton if G is 9.8 meter per second square the resulting acceleration of the slab will be so over here if you look at the value of limiting friction, so it will be mu m g where mu is 0.6, m is uh, 10 and g is 9.8. So, this limiting friction is more, uh, is less than this 100 Newton applied force. So, the nature of the friction will be kinetic. So, kinetic friction will be what? 0 0.4 into 10 g that is 4 g, right? So, kinetic friction on this block will be in this direction 4 g and this action so reaction will be here 4g right so over here over here this 4g is responsible for the acceleration of this 40 kilogram block so 
नेट फोर्स फोर जी डिवाइडेड बाय मास इज इक्वल टू एक्सेलरेशन व्हिच इज इक्वल टू जी अपॉन टेन व्हिच इज पॉइंट नाइन एट मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर नेक्स्ट इज दिस वन इन द फिगर शोन अ पार्टिकल ऑफ मास एम इज रिलीज फ्रॉम द पोजीशन ए ऑन अ स्मूथ ट्रैक लाइक दिस वेन द पार्टिकल रीच इज एट बी देन द नॉर्मल रिएक्शन ऑन इट बाई द ट्रैक इज so we here this is smooth track there's no non conservative force acting on the particle so you can conserve the mechanical energy at point a and at point b right so ea is equal to eb here particle is at rest so kinetic is zero potential is m g into 3h here let's say that velocity of the particle is v so it is half m v square plus potential is m g into this total height is 2h because radius is h so we here 3 mgh minus 2 mgh will be mgh and that is equal to half m v square so v square is 2 gh right now let's draw fbd of block b at the block at point b so mg will be downwards normal will be downwards now these two forces are nothing but a centripetal force right the combination of this two will be centripetal force of block b so it is n plus mg is equal to mv square upon r m v square is 2 gh divided by r is uh, h hh cancel so n plus mg is equal to 2 mg right so n is mg which is option one now next is this one statement one a time varying electric field is a source of changing magnetic field and vice versa which is true does a disturbance in electric or magnetic field creates em waves true in a material medium the em wave travels with speed v upon one, v is equals to 1 upon under root of mu not epsilon not no this is the speed in vacuum in a medium it will become 1 upon under root of mu into epsilon so statement 1 is true statement 2 uh, is false right so statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is false okay so 3 is the correct answer next is this one a body starts from rest from a point um distance are not from the center of the earth and uh, the velocity acquired by the body when it reaches the surface of the earth will be so this is uh, let's say center body is starting its motion from here initial separation from the center of the earth is r not and let's say mass of the body is m and mass of the earth is capital m okay and r is the radius of the earth so when body is here its kinetic is zero because it is starting from rest and its potential is minus g m m divided by r not when body is on the surface let's say its velocity is v so its potential is kinetic is half mv square plus potential is minus g m m divided by r so you will get half mv square is equal to a uh, gmm divided by r minus gmm divided by r not mm cancel and you will get uh, v square as 2 gm into 1 upon r minus 1 upon r not and after solving this one you will get the value of velocity as this much next is this one the statement one the stream of water flowing flowing at high speed from a garden hose pipe tends to spread like a fountain when held vertically up but tends to narrow down when held vertical vertically down okay uh, in any steady flow of an incompressible fluid the volume flow rate of the fluid remains constant yes volume flow rate is area into velocity is constant so area is inversely proportional to velocity or you can say that velocity is inversely proportional to area right so if area is more velocity will be less so that is why when you hold it upwards it spreads like a fountain when you hold it downwards uh, the stream is uh, narrowed down right so over here uh, statement 1 2 both are correct and 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 so correct answer is option 1 next is this one a tank is filled with water up to a height h water is allowed to come out of a hole here and um, 
express the horizontal distance x in terms of h and h. So, basically this is we have to find range this is direct formula based and it is nothing but 2 times under root h minus h into h right where h is the um, depth of this point p from the surface of the water right. So, uh, that is option 3. Next is an alpha particle and a proton are accelerated from rest through the same potential difference. The ratio of the linear momenta acquired by the above particle will be. So, linear momenta is under root 2 m q v right. So, for alpha particle it is under root 2 times now, if you compare proton and alpha particle, so mass of proton is m, then mass of alpha particle is 4m, charge on proton is q, then charge on alpha particle is 2q, right. So, it is under root 2, 4m into 2q into v and p proton is under root 2m q v divided cancel this common terms out. So, you will get your ratio as 2 root 2 divided by 1, right. So, correct answer is option 2. Next is, if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are the wavelengths of the third member of Lyman series and first member of the Paschen series respectively, then the value of lambda 1 is 2 lambda 2. So, for Lyman series, third member will be n is equals to 4 and for Paschen series, uh, third member will uh, first member for passion series we have first member so passion series is for n is equals to through so n is equals to 4 is the first member for passion series so in that case 1 upon lambda 1 is uh, r into 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon 4 square so it is 1 upon lambda 1 is 15 r upon 16 15 r upon 16 okay and in this case 1 upon lambda 2 is equal to r into 1 upon uh, 3 square minus 1 upon 4 square right. So, 1 upon lambda 2 is uh, r into this is 16 minus 9 7 divided by 9 into 16 right ok. So, we have lambda 1 we have lambda 2 when we divide it we will get the ratio lambda 1 upon lambda 2 as 7 upon 135 7 upon 135 over here. So, correct answer is option 3. Next is this one, half lives of two radioactive elements A and B are 20 minutes and 40 minutes respectively. Initially, they have the same number of nuclei. After 80 minutes, the ratio of decayed number of nuclei of A and B will be. So, half life is 20 minutes. So, after 20 minute nuclei left and not by 2. After 20 minutes, nuclei left and not by 2 by 2 and not by 4. After further 20 minutes, nuclei left and not upon 8. After one more 20 minutes, nuclei left are and not upon 16. Okay, so these are 80 minutes, 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 because uh, 80 minutes is equivalent to 4 half life. So, in one half life and not by 2, another half life and not by 4, another half life and not by 8 and another half life and not by 16 right. So, basically left are and not upon 16. So, decayed are and not minus and not upon 16 which are 15 and not upon 16 for A. For B half life is 40 minutes. So, in first 40 minutes left are and not by 2. In the next 40 minutes left are and not by 4. So, these are 40 plus 40 80 minutes. 40 80 minutes are nothing but two half lives are of B, right. So, we are left with n naught upon 4. So, decayed are n naught minus n naught upon 4 which is 3 n naught upon 4. So, ratio will be 15 n naught upon 16 divided by 3 n naught upon 4. So, this is 5 is to 4 which is option 2. Next is mobility of electrons in a semiconductor is defined as the ratio of the drift velocity to the applied uh, electric field. For n type semiconductor, n is 10 power 19 per meter cube and their mobility is 1.6 meter square volt second. Then we need to find the resistivity of the semiconductor of the material. So, we know that for it, it is sigma is n e mu 
mu is mobility 1 upon rho is sigma which is n e mu. So, basically rho is 1 upon n e mu. So, it is 1 upon n is 10 power 19 e is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 and mu is 1.6. So, after solving this one you will get your resistivity as 4 ohm into meter which is option 2. Next is a square frame of side 10 centimeter and a long straight wire carrying current 1 ampere are in the plane of the paper. Starting from close to the wire, the frame moves towards the right with a constant speed of 10 meter per second. The EMF induced at the time, the left arm of the frame is at x is equals to 10 meter, 10 centimeter, right, from the wire is. So, here EMF induced will be into the plane. Let us say here it is B1 and at this side it is B2. So, uh, basically EMF induced will be VLB, so it is uh, B1 minus B2. So, V is uh, 10, L is equal to side of the square is uh, 10 centimeter which is 0 0.1 and B1 is mu naught I which is 1 divided by mu naught I divided by um, this is a straight wire. So, it is 2 pi r, 2 pi r for it is 0 0.1 minus mu naught i into 2 pi into 0 0.2, right. So, after solving this one, you will get the EMF induced as 1 micro volt, which is option 2. Next is this one, a printed page is pressed by a glass of water, the refractive index of the glass and the water is 1.5 and 1.33 respectively. If the thickness of the bottom of the glass is 1 centimeter and depth of the water is 5 centimeter, how much the page will appear to be shifted if viewed from the top? So, basically the total depth from the surface is 5 centimeter of water and 1 centimeter of the thickness of the glass. So, total depth is 6 centimeter. Now, the apparent depth will be what? It will be uh, d1 upon mu1 plus d2 upon mu2. So, d1 is 5 divided by uh, glass and water. So, thickness of the bottom of the glass is and water is 5 and it is 1.33 plus it is 1 divided by 1.5. So, you will get thickness in this case around... Uh, I think 1 point, uh, no, 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 1 point no, uh, 6 no, so it will be around 4 point something, right. So, if you find this shift that is D minus this apparent thickness, so your correct answer will be 1.575 centimeter, okay. Now, next is two springs of spring constants K1 and K2 are connected to a mass as shown. The frequency of oscillation of the mass is um, F. If both K1 and K2 are made four times their original values, the frequency of oscillation will become. So, over here, frequency of oscillation will be um, what? This two are in parallel, right? So, K equivalent will be K1 plus K2, right? And frequency of oscillation is 1 upon 2 pi under root k upon m, right. So, initial it is 1 upon 2 pi under root k1 plus k2 upon m. Now, we are making this values 4 times. So, new frequency f dash will be 1 upon 2 pi under root 4 k1 plus 4 k2 divided by m. You can take this 4 outside. So, it is 2 times 1 upon 2 pi under root k1 plus k2 divided by m, right. So, this is nothing but 2 times the previous frequency. So, correct answer is option 1, 2f. Next is this one, a uniform string of length 20 meter is suspended from a rigid support. A short wave pulse is introduced at its lowest end. It starts moving up the string. The time taken to reach the support is. So, we here, speed of the wave in the string is under root t upon mu, right, t uh, is mg and this is a string. So, let us say at a distance x up the string, the tension value is t 
and mass is m. So, over here mass will be uh, m dash, let us say mass is m dash, total mass I am considering m, total length I am considering l. So, m dash will be mass per unit length into uh, length of this much portion that is x into g, right and uh, mu is total mass divided by total length. So, speed will be under root t uh, that is m x g divided by l divided by m upon l, cancel, cancel. So, v is under root x into under root g, okay. So, v is nothing but dx upon dt which is equal to under root x into under root g, right. So, over here dx upon under root x is equal to under root g dt integrated from 0 to l from 0 to t. So, this will give you what? Uh, x to the power minus 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 by 2, right, um, from 0 to L and that is equal to under root g t, okay. So, this will be what? 2 under root x 0 to L is equal to under root g t, right. So, this is 2 under root L divided by under root g is equal to t, okay. So, this will be um, 2 under root L is 20, under root g is under root 10. So, this is 2 root 2 seconds, right. So, correct answer is option 1. Next is this one, a charged oil drop is suspended in a uniform field of this much so that it neither falls nor rises, the charge on the drop will be. So, basically if charge on the drop is Q, so QE force will be in upward direction mg force will be in downward direction and q is balanced by mg so q will be mg upon e right so over here m is how much m is 9.9 uh, .9 into 10 power minus 15 g is 10 divided by e is 3 into 10 power 4 right so this will be 3.3 um, .3 into 10 power minus 18 3.3 into 10 power minus 18 coulomb, okay. Next is concentric metallic hollow spheres of radii R and 4R hold charge Q1 and Q2 respectively given that the surface charge densities of the concentric spheres are equal the potential difference Vr minus V4R is. So, potential of this sphere is what? Due to Q1 charge it is K q1 upon r plus due to q2 charge it is k q2 upon 4r. Similarly, potential of this sphere is k q1 upon 4r plus k q2 upon 4r, okay. So, vr minus v4r if you subtract this from this, so it will be k q1 upon r plus k q2 upon 4r minus this value k q1 upon 4r minus k q2 upon 4r, okay. So, this will be 3 k q1 upon 4r which is um, if you put k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. So, it is 3 q1 upon 16 pi epsilon naught into r which is option 1. Next is this one, calculate the amount of charge on capacitor of 4 microfarad the internal resistance of the battery is 1 ohm. So, over here uh, we are providing DC, right. So, this uh, capacitor will block the DC. So, current will flow in this uh, branch only like this, okay. So, effective resistance will be what? 4 ohm and 1 ohm of uh, internal resistance of the battery. So, I will be phi divided by 1 plus 4 that is 1 ampere, okay. So, potential difference across this two, let us say this is P, this is Q. So, Vp is, is equal to plus minus, uh, current is flowing like this, so it is positive negative, minus phi, Vp minus phi plus Ir is equal to Vq, get off, right. So, Vp minus Vq is equal to 4 volt, that means the value of capacitance across this uh, value of potential difference across this two points is 4 volt that means across this two points is also 4 volts right this and this. Now, let us reduce it. So, we have 4 microfarad and this 2 and 2 are in parallel. So, their equivalent is also 4 microfarad 
ठीक है सो द नेट इक्विलेंट इज वॉट फोर प्लस फोर सॉरी दिज आर इन सीरीज सो इट विल बी फोर इंटू फोर डिवाइडेड बाई फोर प्लस फोर सो इट इज टू माइक्रो फैरिड राइट सो टोटल चार्ज क्यू इज इक्वल टू वॉट सी इक्विवेलेंट इन टू वी सी इक्वलेंट इज टू वी इज फोर सो इट इज एट माइक्रोकुलम एंड सिंस दिस टू आर इन सीरीज दिस एंड दिस चार्ज ऑन दिस विल बी इक्वल राइट चार्ज ऑन दिस विल बी इक्वल दैट इज इक्वल टू फोर एट माइक्रोकुलम विच इज ऑप्शन वन नेक्स्ट इज दिस वन द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ अ वायर इज फाइव डिग्री सेल्शियस ओ फाइव ओम एट एंड सिक्स ओम एट हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्शियस ओके बेसिकली दिस समथिंग मिसिंग ओवर ह्योर द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द वायर इज फाइव ओम आई थिंक द डेटा इज दिस at 50 degree celsius and 6 ohm at 100 degree celsius what is the resistance at 0 degree celsius so let's say 0 degree celsius where resistances are not so for first one phi ohm is equal to r not into 1 plus alpha delta t is 50 minus 0 50 and for second one 6 is equal to r not into 1 plus alpha into delta t okay let's divide it you'll get the value of alpha so it will be 5 plus 5 alpha into 100 is equal to 6 plus 6 alpha into 50 so we have 500 minus 300 200 alpha is equal to 1 so alpha is 1 upon 200 let's put it here so 5 is equal to r not into 1 plus alpha uh, uh, which is 1 upon 200 into 50 So this is one plus one by four, five by four. So R naught will be four ohm, which is option four. Option four. Next is this one. Two identical thin convex lenses of focal length fifteen centimeter and refractive index one point five are in contact with each other. Okay, bi convex lenses are there, like this. Okay, identical. That means focal length same. The space between the lenses is filled with a liquid of refractive index 1.25. This space is filled with a liquid of refractive index 1.25. Okay. The focal length of the combination is let's say focal length of this one is f1, focal length of this one will be f2, and focal length of this one is f3. And uh, radius of curvature I'm assuming this is biconvex, so r1 is equals to r2 is equals to r. Right. So for the first one, uh, we have one upon fifteen. One upon focal length fifteen is equals to mu minus one, one point five minus one point five into one upon r one is positive minus one upon r two is negative. So it is minus r. So basically one upon fifteen is point five into two upon r. So r is fifteen centimeter. ठीक है फॉर द सेकेंड लेंस लेट से वन अपॉन एफ टू इज म्यू माइनस वन वन पॉइंट टू फाइव माइनस वन पॉइंट टू फाइव वन अपॉन आर वन वन अपॉन आर वन इट इज नेगेटिव माइनस वन अपॉन आर टू आर टू विल बी पॉजिटिव ओके सो इट इज पॉइंट टू फाइव टाइम्स माइनस टू अपॉन आर सो इट इज माइनस पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स आर राइट सो इट इज वन अपॉन 2r with negative sign, so f2 will be minus 2r, which is minus 30 centimeter, and f3 is again equivalent to f2, ah uh, f1, right? That is 15 centimeter. So equivalent focal length, one upon f equivalent will be one upon f1, one upon f2, one upon f3, right? So this is 30 lcm, 2 minus 1 plus 2, so this is 30 upon 3 upon 30, so it is 1 upon 10. So f equivalent will be 10 centimeter. It will be 10 centimeter. Next is this one. In a double slit experiment with monochromatic light, fringes are obtained on a screen placed at some distance from the plane of slits. If the screen is moved by this much centimeter towards the slit, the change in fringe width is this much. 
if the distance between the slits is 1 millimeter, then the wavelength of the light will be. So, if the distance between the slits and the screen is d, then let us say fringe width is beta that is lambda d upon d which is 1 millimeter. Now, when a new fringe width is let us say beta dash, when you change the value of d, you are uh, bringing slits closer. So, d will decrease by 5 to 10 power minus 2 centimeter it will decrease by phi into 10 power minus 2 centimeter divided by 1 millimeter. Now, um, beta minus beta dash is given as 3 into 10 power minus 2 centimeter. So, basically lambda d divided by 1 millimeter minus lambda d divided by 1 millimeter plus lambda into phi into 10 power minus 2 centimeter divided by 1 millimeter is given as a uh, 3 into 10 power minus 2 centi minus 2 centimeter. So, this will cancel this. So, it is lambda is equals to uh, 3 into 10 power minus 2 into 10 power minus 1 divided by 5 into 10 power minus 2. So, if you solve it further, you will get it as 600 nanometer. Okay. Next is this one, the electric field in an electromagnetic wave is given as this much. The energy contained in a cylinder of volume V is this much, the value of V in centimeter cube is. So, it is half epsilon naught E square into V is equal to 5.5 into 10 power minus 12. Half epsilon naught is 8.8 into 10 power minus 12 into E square is 50 into 50 is equal to 5.5 and of course, we have V like this into 10 power minus 12. So, after solving this one, you will get the value of V as a 500 centimeter cube, okay, 500 centimeter cube. Next is this one, a non-isotropic solid metal cube has coefficients of linear expansion as 5 into 10 power minus 5 per degree Celsius along Y and z axis it is phi into 10 power minus 6 per degree Celsius. What is the value of uh, gamma? Right, So, gamma will be alpha x plus alpha y plus alpha z. So, it will be 50 you can write it as 50 into 10 power minus 6 plus phi into 10 power minus 6 into phi into 10 power minus 6. So, it will be 16 to 10 power minus 6 per degree Celsius inverse. Next is a diatomic gas does 400 joules of work when it is expanded isobarically the heat given to the gas in the process is right. So, over here work is P delta V which is NR delta T which is 400 joules right. So, delta T is 400 divided by NR isobarically that is why I am using work done as P delta V. Heat is uh, heat given to the system is N C P delta T. Heat given to the system is N C P delta T. Right. So, over here, over here uh, N C P is gamma R upon gamma minus 1 into delta T is 400 divided by NR. NR, NR cancel and gamma for diatomic gas is 1.4. So, it is 1.4 divided by 1.4 minus 1 into 400. So, this will give you 1400 joules, okay, 1400 joules. Next is this one, nitrogen gas at uh, 300 degree Celsius temperature. The temperature at which the RMS speed of hydrogen molecule would be equal to the RMS speed of the nitrogen molecule is. So, RMS is under root 3 RT divided by M for nitrogen it will be under root 3 RT. Temperature is 300 plus 253 Kelvin that is 553 divided by M is 28 and it should be equal to RMS for H2 molecule. So, it is under root 3 RT divided by M for H2 is 2 right. So, after solving this one you will get T as 41 Kelvin T as 41. Kelvin. 
Next is this one, 4 resistances 15, 12, 4 and 10 respectively in a cyclic order to form Wheatstone network. The resistance that is to be connected in parallel with the resistance of 10 ohm to balance the network is. So, we have 4 resistances, we have 4 resistances like this, okay. We have 4 resistances like this, 15, 12, 4 and 10 and we want to connect one resistance R in parallel so that it becomes balanced with stone bridge. That means 15 upon 12 should be what? 15 upon 12 uh, should be, uh, sorry this is 10 and this is 4, cyclic order, right? Let me erase this portion. Okay, so this is 10 R and this is 4. We are not connecting anything with 4, okay. So, it will be the parallel one combination of 10 and R will be 10 R divided by 10 plus R divided by 4, right. So, this will give you what? 15 upon 3 is equal to 10 R divided by 10 plus R. So, over here it is 5, it is 2. So, 10 plus R is equal to 2 R. So, R is 10 ohms. Required resistance to make it balance is 10 ohms, okay. Next is this one. A closely wounded circular coil of radius 5 centimeter produces a magnetic field of this much Tesla at the center, the current through the coil is. So, magnetic field at the center is mu naught i divided by 2 R, right, and that is 37.68 into 10 power minus 4. Mu naught is a 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 i is unknown divided by 2 r is 0 0.05 and that is equal to 37.68 into 10 power minus 4. So, after solving this one you will get the value of current over here as and the number of turns of course, number of turns are there 100 right. So, current through the coil will be 3 ampere, current through the coil will be 3 ampere. Next is in a uniform magnetic field, the magnetic needle has a magnetic moment this much and moment of inertia. It performs 10 complete oscillations in 5 seconds. Then the magnitude of the magnetic field is. So, it takes 10 oscillations in 5 seconds. So, one oscillation will be done in 1 by 2 seconds. So, time period is 1 by 2 second that is equal to 2 pi under root of I upon mb. I is moment of inertia, M is magnetic moment and B is uh, magnetic field. So, if you square it, it is 1 upon 4 into 4 pi square is equal to I upon MB, right. So, B will be I upon M, I is given as uh, 5 into 10 power minus 6 into 4, 4 pi square divided by M is 9.85 into 10 power minus 2. Right, so after solving this, you will get your uh, magnetic field as 8 milli Tesla. Next is this one, a telegraph line of length 100 kilometer has capacity of this much and it carries a alternating current at this kilo cycle per second. If minimum impedance is required, then the value of the inductance that uh, needs to be introduced in series is. So, for minimum impedance, XL is equal to XC, right, so XL is uh, omega L and that is equal to omega 1 upon omega C, right. So, L will be 1 upon omega square into C. When you put the value of omega and C in this formula, you will get this as 100 milli Henry, 100 milli Henry. Welcome to the video solution of chemistry section of grand test number 11. I am Nitin Verma, a chemistry faculty at Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. So, let us get started with the solution. The first question was the ore having two different metal atoms is the correct answer to this question is copper pyrite because it contains copper and iron right. So, this is the empirical formula. In the next question lead dioxide reacts with concentrated HNO3 the gas evolved is oxygen right. So, lead gets reduced from plus 4 to plus 2 state and oxygen atom undergoes oxidation. Between SiCl4 and CCl4 only SiCl4 reacts with water, yes, because silicon has vacant d orbitals. So, SiCl4 undergoes hydrolysis to produce silicic acid, 
but because carbon does not have vacant d orbitals it does not undergo hydrolysis sacl4 is ionic and ccl4 is covalent no both molecules are covalent so the correct answer is option 3 right next question which among the following is most reactive being an interhalogen compound it is more reactive it has polar covalent bond right which breaks easily that is the correct answer xgf2 and xgf6 are separately hydrolyzed then so remember when xgf2 undergoes hydrolysis xenon gets reduced to elemental form and in turns oxygen gets oxidized right to produce o2 xgf2 hydrolysis is a non redox reaction it just involves the replacement of fluoride by oxygen so partial hydrolysis produces xgof4 and xg2o2f2 whereas complete hydrolysis it produces xgo xgo3 right so the correct answer to this question is xgf2 alone gives oxygen gas mercury on heating with aqua regia gives hgcl2 so aqua regia is a solution of 3 to 1 parts of hcl and hno3 so it oxidizes mercury and the product is hgcl2 the d electronic configuration of this hexamine cobalt ion and hexa fluoro ferrite ion respectively are so cobalt is 3d 7 4s2 plus 3 meaning 3 electrons are gone so this is 3dx now in this complex ammonia behaves as a strong field ligand so the d electrons are paired up right so this is t2g right and this is eg like that right so the configuration of cobalt is this t2g6 and eg0 in case of iron fluoride is a weak field ligand it cannot force pairing of d electrons so here iron it, it is 3d6 4s2 plus 3 meaning it is 3d5 so yes it has 3 electrons in t2g orbitals and 2 electron in eg orbital so that is the correct answer to this question the total number of possible isomers for square planar complex this are 12 because remember guys if a complex is square planar with formula m a b c d that is four different ligands so it will exist in three isomers right out of which two will be cis and one will be trans now for each isomer we have here ambidentate ligand right no2 and scn so for each of these three isomers either the NO2 and SCN can exist like this or it can exist like this right or it can exist like this or it can exist like this right so for each of the three isomers there are four combinations possible a total of 12 isomers the correct order of acidic strength in the following compounds here option one is correct first is most acidic right because of the intramolecular hydrogen bonding of carboxylate with OH then because of the ortho effect acidity decreases right then this is less acidic and then this is less acidic which of the following is highest resonance energy this because we have a system of lone pair then double bond at alternate position and another double bond at alternate position the decreasing order of minus I effect theoretical question right so this order is correct option 1 is the correct answer pk1 and pk2 of amino acid are 2.3 9.7 so remember guys the isoelectric point which is pi you can call it it is the average of the pk values so this is 2.3 plus 9.7 divided by 2 which will give you 6.0 that is the correct answer identify a in the given reaction so when you react this molecule with excess of thionyl chloride remember the OH group from alcohol and carboxylic undergo replacement not the phenolic group so this will not be replaced this and this will be replaced right so you can see the correct answer here would be option 2 this Cl and this Cl gets introduced but not this OH is replaced because it is phenolic OH the reaction leading to the formation of 135 trimethylbenzene so in this case this is the correct answer because acetone it's aldol condensation on concentrated H2SO4 first it produces mesetyl oxide and then it produces mesetylene which is this right sim trimethyl benzene this will give you benzene right pericyclic reaction cyclic polymerization when you react with bromine and NOH that's Hoffman uh, uh, that's the iodoform reaction right or haloform reaction you can say so this will give you COH this will give you COH 
right and then you heat it with soda lime so carboxylic group goes away so you will actually get here benzene and here the Clemenson reduction so all they will be CS3 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 so it is not 135 it is 124 trimethylbenzene so of course that is the correct answer in this question the product of the following reaction sequences so NH2 when undergoes acetylation the product is NHCOCH3 right BRO3 minus and BR minus they undergo comproportionation to produce bromine right so that means this is a bromination reaction so we get right we get this bromine at para position then you carry out the diazotization right then you get the hydrolysis so this group goes away and we get NH2 here again then diazotization and then followed by reaction with copper and HBr so basically this group gets replaced by bromine so the correct answer is 1,4 dibromo benzene all right in this hoffman bromide degradation reaction of benzamide is benzene carboxamide cunh2 if you carry out the hoffman bromide degradation then carbonyl group will go away simply and you will get aniline so a is aniline right so that eliminates option one and option four which upon heating with chloroform in koh undergoes carbylamine reaction where NH2 group gets replaced by NC isocyanide right this is our B B on hydrolysis with water so if you hydrolyze this compound which is they have called B it will give you aniline again right aniline formic acid so correct answer is this one only both A and C are aniline nitrogen and oxygen are the main components in the atmosphere but they do not react to form oxides of nitrogen true right the reaction between nitrogen and oxygen requires high temperature yes because the triple bond in nitrogen and double bond oxygen they are very strong so the correct answer is option 3 bromobenzene upon reaction with bromine and iron gives 1,4 dibromobenzene as a major product yes because halogens are interesting uh, their minus I effect dominates in the reactivity that is uh, haloarenes are less reactive than benzene but as far as orientation is concerned their mesomeric resonance effect dominates right so because bromine has lone pair it donates electrons so they are ortho and para directors but they are slightly deactivating because of the strong minus i effect so the correct answer to this question is a statement uh, this right one is true but two is false in bromobenzene the inductive effect is not dominant in directing the encomunicular uh, electrophile the mesomeric effect is dominant para hydroxybenzoic acid has lower boiling point than orthohydroxy no it has intermolecular hydrogen bonding so whenever there is intramolecular hydrogen bonding right so intramolecular forces are strong so it has higher boiling point this is incorrect orthohydroxybenzoic acid is intramolecular hydrogen bonding yes that is correct so statement 1 is false statement 2 is true if in a ionic solid mx with short kid effects the number of positive and negative ions are same uh, yes why because equal number of cation and anionic vacancies are present m plus and x minus for each m missing there would be an x missing because we have to maintain the electrical neutrality so the correct answer is option one a real gas is subjected to an adiabatic process from four bar 40 liter to six bar 25 liter against a constant pressure in a single step calculate the enthalpy change right so we know that enthalpy change is how much we are doing constant pressure process right so it is irreversible so first let us calculate the work done right so what is work done work done is minus p external delta v now remember that because we are taking the process from 4 bar 40 liter to 6 bar 25 liter so the external pressure against which the compression is being done is 6 bar okay so this is minus 6 bar against which the process is being carried out delta volume is final minus initial so it is 25 minus 40 so this is minus 15 and this is minus 90 uh, minus minus plus 90 liter bar now remember in adiabatic process q is equal to zero right adiabatic means heat is not transferred from the first law of thermodynamics delta u is equal to q plus w if q is equal to zero delta u is equal to w that means delta u is equal to 90 liter bar now let us come back to the enthalpy 
इंथैल्पीज एच इज इक्वल टू यू प्लस पी वी और डेल्टा एच इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा यू प्लस डेल्टा ऑफ पी वी डेल्टा यू वी हैव जस्ट कैलकुलेटेड राइट नाइन्टी लीटर बार एंड डेल्टा ऑफ पी वी इज पी टू वी टू माइनस पी वन वी वन सो सिक्स इंटू ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस फोर इंटू फोर्टी राइट सो यू कैन डू दैट कैलकुलेशन वन फिफ्टी माइनस वन सिक्सटी दैट इज माइनस टेन नाइन्टी माइनस टेन दैट इज एटी लीटर बार सो दैट इज अ करेक्ट आंसर वट इज अ परसेंटेज डिग्री ऑफ हाइड्रोलिस ऑफ अ मिक्सर ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू मोलर एनिलीन एंड जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू मोलर एसिटिक एसिड सो गाइज एनिलीन इज अ वीक बेस एज इज एविडेंट फ्रॉम द वेरी लो वैल्यू ऑफ बेस डिसोसिएशन कॉन्स्टेंट एंड सो इज एसिटिक एसिड बिकॉज द वैल्यू ऑफ एसिड डिसोसिएशन कॉन्स्टेंट इज स्मॉल नॉ रिमेंबर इफ अ सॉल्ट कंटेन्स a cation derived from weak base and an anion derived from weak acid then in such cases the constant is h square and 1 minus h square right okay now also remember that a salt which comes from weak acid and weak base for that salt hydrolysis constant is k w divided by the product of k and kb KW is any product of water which is 10 raised to the power minus 14 at room temperature 25 degrees Celsius. KA is 2 into 10 to the power minus 5. KB is 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 10. Right? So you can see this is 5 into 10 15 and 5 into 10 the 14 14 14 1. So hydrolysis constant is 1. This signals that I cannot ignore the degree of hydrolysis. Right? So this signals that I cannot ignore the degree of hydrolysis. This signals that I cannot ignore the degree of hydrolysis. because the hydrolysis constant is significant right so from here what i can see is h upon 1 minus h is square is 1 so of course h upon 1 minus h is 1 you can solve that you will find h is equal to half which is 50% is the degree of hydrolysis that is percentage hydrolysis right okay so h upon 1 minus h is 1 so you can calculate h will be 1 by 2 right the concentration of r in the reaction was measured as a function of time so guys the concentration of reactant is given along with time so what do we do we calculate the value of rate constant if it comes out to be constant across different time intervals then the reaction is is following that order so starting with zero order reaction right for zero order reaction rate constant is initial concentration minus concentration at time t divided by the time interval right that we have to do the very simplest right So yes, one minus zero point seven five is zero point two five divided by the time interval is point zero five. So this is uh, right. Sorry, this is five. Right. Then one minus zero point four is zero point six, and this is zero point one two. So this is also five. So that confirms that because the rate constant is coming out to be five each time. Using zero order integrated rate equation, so reaction has to be zero order. But anyway, let the let us check the final data set also. One minus zero point one is zero point nine divided by zero point one eight is the time interval. Right. So it is coming out to be five. The reaction is zero order. Right. The value zero. The electrolysis of two fifty mL of NaCl solution was carried out for a period of twenty minutes with a current of two ampere. The resulting solution was titrated with 0.62 molar of nitric acid solution. So, what is the volume of nitric acid solution required to achieve the equivalence point? When you are carrying out the electrolysis of aqueous NaCl solution, the ions present in the solution are this, right? Now, at anode, chloride ion has higher tendency to undergo oxidation as compared to hydroxide. So, chloride will undergo oxidation to pro produce chlorine gas. We are not concerned with that. Out of Na plus and H plus, H plus will undergo reduction. Now remember, H plus comes from water, right? So actually, this is water, H plus and H minus. It takes an electron and it produces hydrogen gas. Okay. So let's take it in a very simple way. For each electron participating in the chemical reaction, there is one hydroxide generated, right? That means number of moles of electrons consumed in the reaction. Participating in the reaction is equal to the number of moles of hydroxide. Now, how do you find out the number of electrons? Num number of Faraday, right? Very simple. So the charge which we are flowing is current into time. Current is two ampere. Time is twenty minute. Don't forget to convert it to second, right? 
so this will be 2400 coulomb now if you divide it by faraday constant that will give you number of moles right so if i divide it by if i take faraday constant 96500 right then a number of moles of electrons will be 24 divided by 965 so hence number of moles of hydroxide will be 24 divided by 965 mole now we know that one HNO3 will neutralize one hydroxide because the n factor of HNO3 is 1, it will give 1H plus. That means number of moles of hydroxide is equal to number of moles of HNO3, right? So 24 divided by 965 is number of moles of HNO3, which is molarity into volume, right? So molarity is given to be 0 0.62 and volume we have to find out, right? So you can solve this and you will find the answer is uh, answer will come out to be in liters don't forget that so don't forget to multiply the answer by 1000 so you will get 40 right 18 gram of glucose is dissolved in 1 kg of water if the solution is cooled to this temperature how many uh, how much mass of ice would separate so basically we will find that if this solution is cooled to the given temperature what should be the molality of the solution right that will give us what amount of solvent is going to remain in the solution phase and then we can subtract that value from 1 kg that will give us the amount of solvent that is separated out as the solution is cooled. So 18 gram of glucose is dissolved in 1 kg of water. Solution is cooled to minus 0 0.2325. So this is the depression in freezing point, right? So this is, uh, we will use delta Tf is Kfm, right? Kf is the cryoscopic constant of water, which they, they, ha they have not given the value, but it is 1.86. So delta Tf, I will take 0 0.2325, Kf is 1.86, right? Molality of solution is moles of glucose, which is 18 divided by 180, right? And mass of water remaining in the solution phase is W to convert into kg. I will divide it by 1000. So, right? So you can calculate W, right? I think it will come out to be... Uh, 800 right you can check the calculation do it right so if it comes out to be 800 right so 1 kg of solution uh, 1 kg of water was initially present right 800 gram water would remain 800 gram water would remain if the solution is to uh, exhibit a depression of freezing point of 2, 0 0.2325 so how much water should come out of the solution such that the molality is this that is 1000 minus 800 which is 200 gram Right, so that is the correct answer. Consider non-stoichiometric compound incompletely given 1.90 O. Right, due to metal deficiency defect, calculate the value of molar ratio of cuprous and cupric ions in the compound. So here we follow the charge balance condition. Right, because oxygen has two minus, so a total of 1.9 copper should have two plus charge. Right. Now let us take the amount of cuprous as x mole then amount of cupric will be 1.9 minus x, right? Because for each mole of oxygen, there is 1.9 mole of copper, right? Now the charge balance condition says that 1.9 mole of copper should have a total of 2 mole of charge, right? So the total charge should be 2 molar, right? The number of moles of cuprous is x, their charge is 1. Number of moles of cupric is 1 minus 1.9 minus x and their charge is 2. Solve this equation and uh, you can find then the num number of moles of cuprous by cupric is coming out to be 18 right 100 ml of 0 0.01 molar surfactant solution forms a monolayer covering 0 0.54 cm square so number of moles of surfactant is molarity multiplied by volume converted to liter so that is 10 raised to the power minus 3 mole that means the surfactant is 10 raised to the power minus 3 mole. It is occupying 0 0.54 centimeter square. So if 10 raised to minus 3 mole of the surfactant is occupying 0 0.54 centimeter square, what is the surface area occupied by one molecule of the surfactant? So you know you have to divide it by 0 0.54 divided by 10 raised to the power minus 3 substitute the value of mole is that clear all right now 
so this how much how will it be so 9 into this is 20 right yeah and that is 22 mm, it will be 10 raised to the power minus 2 sorry take it will be 10 to minus 2 so it will be 9 into 10 raised to the power minus 22 so this is the surface area occupied by one molecule what is the edge length because this is a square so we will take the square root of this so 9 into 10 raised to the power minus 22 which will be 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 so the correct answer will be 3 right y will be 3 is that clear right next question a solution of phenol in chloroform when treated with aqueous NUH gives Compound P is a major product, so this is Riemann reaction, chloroform and aqueous NUH gives you salicylaldehyde, the mass percentage of carbon in the product, right, you can easily find out that this has 6 and 7 carbon atoms, hydrogen are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oxygens are 2, so percentage of carbon in the compound is 7 carbon, 7 into 12 divided by the molar mass of the compound, which is 7 into 12, 1 into 6 and 2 into 16 right multiplied by 100 so you will find the answer is 69 the number of nitrogen atoms in a semi carbon zone molecule of acetone is so this is acetone right if i put oxygen but then semi carbon zone is nh uh, this will not be here right right all right so how many nitrogen atoms are there three it's a simple reaction, nucleophilic addition elimination. Then total number of compounds having at least one bridging oxo group among the molecule is, so one is here, right? So this is bridging oxo, right? So the correct answer to this question is 5. Why? Because there is one in N2O5, there is one in P4O6, right? You can draw the structure. Right? So you can see there are a lot of uh, every oxygen is a bridging oxygen. Then in P4O10, uh, you have oh, you have this. So it's still there are bridging oxygen, right? Then there is in uh, H4P2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, H4P2, O5. Uh, is that clear? Right? And then there is one in H5P3, O10, right? So uh, this goes like this. Right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, H5, P3, and 3 and 3, 6 and 7, 8, and then 9, 10. Yes, of course, there are bridging oxygen also, right? So, right, so there are 5 compounds in total, okay? So, that is uh, all in this solution, guys. Thank you for watching. Hi, dear students, welcome to Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. Now, let us see the mathematics part of the solutions of the paper dated 21st Jan, right? Let us go to the first question. You see, here it is given f of x is 2 plus cos x for all real x, right? Now, statement 1, statement 2, there are two statements we need to conclude which are correct and correct explanation related. See, for each t, there exists a point in closed interval t to t plus pi such that f dash of t equal to 0. Here are 2 plus cos x graph if you take, you know cos x graph, see 0 to pi, it will be like this. 2 plus cos x means it shifts by 2 units, that's it. But the, you see the curvature and the maxima, minima will retain the same kind of. So my dear friends, I mean to say the graph of this particular function 2 plus cos x when this is x axis, you see we can say this will be like this my dear friends. So, suppose this is 0, in that case it is going to be, you see 3 here, because 0 is th here 0 plus 1, 3 and when it is pi by 2 cos 90 is 0, we can say it is going to take, suppose this is pi by 2 my dear friends, this is going to be 2, like this it will be moving. 
So one thing I can say, the curvature, you start at any point in the interval of 2 pi, somewhere it turns, my dear friends. Suppose cos x graph you just take, cos minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, here it is 0. Suppose if you move t distance here, it also gets t distance here. If you move t more and it will be same. Suppose if you come here, it comes like this. So derivative will be 0 here in the sense, again it is 0. So you take any interval, closed interval of length pi, there exists a point where derivative becomes 0. So this statement is absolutely correct, right friends. Second, f of t is f of t plus 2 pi, perfect, because cos of uh, t x plus 2 pi is going to be cos x itself. So this is also correct statement, but this is not going to help to answer this particular question, right, because here we are just observing for a length of pi, not the periodicity. So both the statements are correct, but it is not the correct explanation, my dear friends. Next, you see this question, the numbers appeared on the two, two throws of a fair die, six faced dice are alpha and beta. If the numbers appeared on the two throws of a single die, okay, are alpha and beta, then the probability that this particular inequation is true for all x belongs to R. In fact, my dear friends, when two dice are thrown, we can say total number of cases will be 36, fine. I want those cases alpha and beta such that a quadratic expression is greater than 0 for all x in the sense x square quotient anyhow positive, delta must be strictly less than 0. Delta means b square minus 4ac must be less than 0. So that means alpha square less than 4 beta, my dear friends. So you just see how many ordered pairs like 1, 1, 2, 6, 6 satisfy this. So alpha and beta, my dear friends. If you put beta is 1, so alpha square must be less than 4, you can take alpha is 1. You cannot take 2, my dear friends. If beta is 2, you see alpha square less than 8, that means 1 comma 2, that's it. If beta is 3, alpha square less than 12, so 1, 2, 3. If beta is 4, alpha square less than 16, 1, 2, 3 possibilities. If beta is 5, less than 20, that means 1, 2, 3, 4 only. If beta is 6, my dear friends, less than 24, again 1, 2, 3, 4 itself. So totally ordered pairs, how many? 4, 8 plus 3, 11, 11 plus 3, 14, 3, 17. There are 17 possible cases out of 36. The probability is going to be 17 by 36, my dear friends. This is the answer. Next, you see this question. The letters of the word mankind are written in all possible orders and arranged in serial order as in English dictionary. So then the serial number of the word mankind, we call it as rank problem. Mankind, if you take, you just see the letters which come in alphabetical order, first letter is A, then you can go with D, then it is I is 9, K is 11, then M, N, N. You see my dear friend, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 letters are there. Now out of these, I am going to arrange them in dictionary order, I want the rank of mankind. How many words will be there which start with A? Once first letter is fixed, there are six letters of which two n's are there. So these can be arranged in six factorial by two factorial, which is 360, my dear friends. Because six factorial is 720 by two is 360. I, I have to cross all these. Then how many will be there which start with D? Same answer, 360. Which start with I? 360. Which start with K? 360. So after that, the next word, word start with yum. I want yum, my dear friends. You see, my word is mankind. So yum is to be there. So I can't cross all the letters starting with yum. So I require yum, so m cancelled. Then after yum, you see, this is done. Yum ye, I want. Then m a d, how many will be there which start with m a d? You see seven letters, no, four are left of which two n's are there, four factorial by two factorial, which is 12, my dear friends. Then m a i, 
सो सेम लॉजिक ट्वेल्व एम ए के सो यू विल गेट सेम ट्वेल्व एम ए एन आई वॉन्ट सो कैंसिल इट एम ए आई डी सी एम ए एन डी आई डोंट वॉन्ट दिस तो थ्री आर लेफ्ट वेर थ्री आर डिफरेंट लेटर्स थ्री फैक्टोरियल सिक्स यू विल गेट सो एम ए एन आई यू विल गेट अगेन सिक्स एम ए एन के आई वॉन्ट मैन काइंड के आई वॉन्ट के देन के डी सो आई डोंट वॉन्ट सो टू आर लेफ्ट सो टू फैक्टोरियल टू देन एम ए एन के आफ्टर डी के आई आई वॉन्ट के आई डी आई डोंट वॉन्ट सो वन फैक्टोरियल The last will be M A N K I. Then left out one N D. So its rank means you have to take this also consideration. So you need to add all these, my dear friends. Seven twenty, seven twenty, fourteen forty, and this is one two three four, forty eight fifty two. You have to add fifty two. Fourteen ninety two is the rank, my dear friends. second option is the answer that's it next my dear friends the sum and the product of mean and variance of a binomial distribution are 24 and 128 respectively then the product of one of two successes there is a minute correction then the sum of here it should be then the sum of one or two successes is the question so my dear friends suppose in a binomial theorem mean is np variance is npq my dear friends so the sum of these and product of these is in the sense npq are given respectively 24 and 128 my dear friends so here you can take np common np into 1 plus q is 24 here n square p square q is 128 Here you can square, my dear friends. N square p square this twenty four square. Now you divide. You will get one plus q whole square by q is equal to, my dear friends. This is twenty four square in the sense twelve into two into twelve into two by one twenty eight. This is friends. That is four into we can say thirty two. This is sixteen into two, my dear friends. So we can say four three times four fours four three times, and you can also cancel four, my dear friends, which is going to be nine by two. Nine by two means there are two possibilities for q. Q is two or one by two, but q cannot be two because it's the probability. So q is one by two. If q is one by two, p is also one by two, my dear friends. Both are one by two. And what about n? n by 2 plus n by 4 that is 2n by 4 plus n by 4 3n by 4 is 24 so that is 3n by 4 is equal to 24 n is equal to 32 fine i want prob sum of probability of p x is x is equal to 1 or p x is equal to 2 my dear friends p x is equal to 1 means 32 c 1 Here anyhow you will get one by two power thirty two. Here thirty two c two into one by two power thirty two, my dear friends. So you are going to get one by two power thirty two. You take common. Here you are going to get thirty two plus thirty two c two means sixteen into thirty one here. You see this is thirty two plus this is thirty two into thirty one by two. That is sixteen into thirty one. So you can say sixteen into thirty-three. It is. I can say sixteen into thirty-three. Two power four gets cancelled. Thirty-three by two power twenty-eight is the answer. Third option is the right answer. That's it. Next, my dear friends, a tower PQ stands on a horizontal ground with base Q. Okay, P here. The ground. The point R divides the tower in the in two parts such that Q R is equal to fifteen. Okay, this is fifteen. Now, if from a point A on the ground the angle of elevation of R is sixty, so this is sixty degrees, my dear friends. Okay, then 
and the part PR of the tower subtends an angle of 15 degrees at A. So, this is going to subtend 15 degrees at A, fine. Then the height of the tower, I want height of the tower. Fine, one thing my dear friends, since this is 15, here 30, adjacent side 15 means opposite side is going to be 15 by root 3 here. So, this total angle is 75, height is suppose head mature, my dear friends. Tan 75 degrees is nothing but h by 15 by root 3. So, root 3 h by 15. But tan 75 means cot 15 which is 2 plus root 3 is equal to root 3 h by 15 which is h by 5 root 3 my dear friends. You just multiply 10 root 3 plus 15. So, this is the answer 10 root 3 plus 15. Okay. Next my dear friends, the number of solutions of mod cos x is equal to sin x in the interval 0 to 2 pi. In the interval 0 to 2 pi, sin x graph 0 to pi, pi to 2 pi. Mod cos x is you see 0 to pi by 2 and pi pi 2 to actually it comes down and then it goes up, but modulus right this and this. This is the graph of mod cos x. So, now they are going to intersect at only 2 points my dear friends. So, number of solutions is 2. Next my dear friends, you see a1, a2, a3, a4 are in GP, okay. why do not you take like 1, 2, 4, 8, b1 is equal to a1 say 1, b2 is b1 plus a2 that means b1 plus a2, 1 plus 2 is 3, b3 is b2 plus a3. 3 plus 4 7, b 4 is 7 plus 8 15, this is the one, 1 3 7 15 is are going to be b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4. You see the numbers these are neither in AP nor in JP, perfect because they are not in AP very clear, GP means 1 into 15 is equal to 7 into 3 not possible, first statement is correct. The numbers b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4 are in HP that is also wrong because 1 by 1, 1 by 3, 1 by 7, 1 by 15 they must be in AP, but they do not, they are not in AP, you can check. If they are in AP, sum of these two is equal to sum of these two, not possible. So, second statement is false, first statement is correct. So, statement 1 is true, statement 2 is false, that is it. Next, my dear friends, the abscess of two points P, Q and a circle B roots of this equation and the ordinates P, Q are the roots of this particular equation. P, Q is diameter of the circle this particular circle then value of a plus b minus c. My dear friends, I think you know if p q are the ends of the diameter, the equation of the circle is going to be x minus x 1 into x minus x 2 plus y minus y 1 into y minus y 2 is equal to 0. That means, the quadratic equation with roots abscess of p q plus quadratic equation in y with roots ordinates of p q. So, simply the circle equation you can write like x square minus 4 x minus 6 plus y square plus 2 y minus 7 equal to 0. That means, x square plus y square minus 4 x plus 2 y minus 13 equal to 0. Whereas, here the circle equation is x square plus y square plus 2 a x plus 2 b y plus c equal to 0. So, you compare here friends, a value is minus 2 and b value is 1 and c value is minus 13. He said a minus c will become 13 minus 2 11, 11 plus 1 12 is the answer, that is it, simple. Next, you see mod a less than 1 means this is an infinite series, x is nothing but a by 1 minus r, n is equal to 0 first term is 1 by 1 minus r is 1 by a. Similarly, y is 1 by 1 minus b, z is equal to 1 by 1 minus c. Given that a, b, c are in a, p, if a, b, c are in a, p my dear friends, you see minus a, minus b, minus c also in a, p, 1 minus a, 1 minus b, 1 minus c will also be in a, p. So, the reciprocals will be in. So, these are nothing but we can say 1 by x, 1 by y, 1 by z according to the problem. So, 1 by x, 1 by y, 1 by z are in a p is the right answer. Okay. Next, a point p moves so that the sum of the squares of its distances from 
these two points is 40, 14 my dear friends. That means let P be that point x comma y the condition is like if these are a b p a square plus p b square is equal to 14. p a square is x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square plus x plus 2 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square is equal to 14. That means friends 2 x square plus 2 y square here minus 2 x here plus 4 x will become 2 x here minus 4 y minus 2y will become minus 6y. Here you see 4, 1, 5, 5, 10 is equal to 4, minus 4 equal to 0. This is the point. Now, uh, which intersects x axis at the points a comma b? So, x axis means you can also further simplify this is x square plus y square plus x minus 3y minus 2 equal to 0. So, where does this cut x axis means put y is equal to 0, you will get x square plus x minus 2 equal to 0, the roots are 1 comma minus 2. So, the points are going to be 1 0 minus 2 0 my dear friends, right. Yeah, similarly you can say uh, it cuts y axis at the point C D, put x is equal to 0 here, you will get y square minus 3 y minus 2 equal to 0. So, my dear friends, I can say here, you can just see the y values, my dear friends. If you put, you can see y is equal to 1 or you see here also, my dear friends, it is going to cut y axis in the sense you have to take x is equal to 0. So, y square minus 3 y. So, 2 comma 1, this is plus or minus, you just check y square coefficient. This is minus 2 y because this point is x minus 1 y minus 2 x plus 2 y minus 1 2 y square minus 6 y this is correct. So, 2 minus 3 y and constant also 5 plus 5 10 minus 4 equal to 0 will become minus 2 my dear friends. Here you have to get 2 the roots of this equation are going to be y 1 y 2 my dear friends. So, I can say my dear friends here is this minus 2 or plus 2 you just check and accordingly you are going to get CD. Now, the area of the quadrilateral ACBD means when you know 4 vertices of a quadrilateral half modulus x1 y1, x2 y2, x3 y3, x4 y4 and repeat the first x1 y1. You just find this area you are going to get the area to be 9 by 2 something. Okay. Just what you need to find is equation of the circle followed by this. Okay. Right, my dear friends. Next, you see this limit, my dear friends, as x tends to pi by 2, this is infinity and this may be some other number. What you need to do is limit x tends to pi by 2, my dear friends. You just write it as sin square x by cos square x. And you see my dear friends, it is like root a minus root b, you multiply with root a plus root b, so that it becomes a square minus b square, 2 sin square minus sin square x will become sin square x, 3 sin x minus 2 will become minus 3 sin x, plus 4 minus 2 will become plus 2. By my dear friends, here you will get root of this plus root of this you are going to get. As x tends to pi by 2, my dear friends, sin 90 is 1, this term you can take out. Here if you put x tends to pi by 2, this is 7 plus 2, 9, root 9 plus root 9, 3 plus 3, 6, you can write 1 by 6 into limit x tends to pi by 2. This is my dear friends, you can factorize this sin x minus 1 into sin x minus 2 by cos square x means 1 minus sin square x, 1 minus sin x into 1 plus sin x my dear friends. Now, these two will get cancelled and become minus 1. So, you write minus 1 by 6, substitute pi by 2, sin 90 is 1, 1 minus 2 is minus 1 by 1 plus 1 is 2. So, finally, 1 by 12 is the answer my dear friends, 1 by 12. Next, you see the statement is not equal to, here do remember my dear friends, P implies Q is always equivalent to negation P or Q. This is the result that you need to remember my dear friends. Because negation of P implies Q is P and negation Q, 
whose negation is negation p r q. In fact, the given statement you can simplify like p r q you try to write p implies q negation p r q or this is p implies q means negation p r r my dear friends. So, finally, if you could simplify here all are same only negation p r q r r is the statement the given statement I want which is not equivalent to. You see my dear friends the first one like p implies q negation of this means negation p r r or this one q same my dear friends. So, this is equivalent second one same logic p implies q means negation p will become q or this is as it is that is negation r r p same in r you can write in any order this is also correct. You take up this my dear friends negation p means negation p r q r r same this is also this is also fine this will not my dear friends because it is negation p r q r r my dear friends negation p r q r r you just see which is here yeah, this is not ok you see this is negation p r q r r negation p r q r r negation p r q r r this will not. So, which is going to be second option my dear friends. So, not equivalent he is asking this is the answer. So, these are equivalent 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 ok. So, my dear friends point is here you can also write the truth table, but three variables eight cases. So, fine you can also do that next the system of linear equations where lambda k has infinitely many solution then lambda plus k. So, three linear equations in three variables are given I always prefer that equation where x coefficient is 1. So, I write the second equation first which is 1 minus 3 2 1 this is 2 1 minus 1 7 third equation 1 4 delta and k this is. So, now my dear friends with the help of this I make this is 0 that means r 2 I change as r 2 minus 2 r 1 r 3 I change as r 3 minus r 1 which becomes my dear friends 1 minus 3 2 1 double and subtract 0 this becomes 7 this is minus 5 double and subtract minus 5 this is 5 here also direct subtract 0 this becomes 7 this becomes uh, delta minus 2 this is k minus 1. So, my dear friends you just subtract r 3 minus r 2 this becomes 1 minus 3 2 1 0 7 minus 5 5 if you subtract 0 0 lambda minus 2 plus 5 will become lambda plus 3 this is k minus 1 minus 1 will become k minus 6. Friends, if this is to have infinitely many solutions rank of A rank of B both equal, but not equal to 3. So, lambda plus 3 must be 0. So, that means delta delta must be minus 3 and k must be 6 my dear friends. So, delta plus k is going to be 6 minus 3 3 is the answer that is it next. The normal to this particular curve yeah at the point where the curve intersects y axis passes through the point we at which point where the curve intersects y axis intersects y axis means put x coordinate is 0 this is 6 y is equal to 6 my dear friends y is equal to 1 this is the point at this point you try to find tangent slope y is equal to x plus 6 by x square minus 5 x plus 6. So, y dash you try to find y dash is equal to v derivative of u minus u derivative of v that is 2 x minus 5 by v square that is x square minus 5 x plus 6 whole square fine at the point 0 comma 1. So, I need to get this is y dash y dash is going to be my dear friends say m slope of the tangent put x is equal to 0 here you will get 6 minus 6 5 the 30 right. So, plus 30 
by 36 which is 1 my dear friends. So, at this point tangent slope is 1. So, normal slope is minus 1. So, I want equation of the normal. So, I want yeah uh, line slope minus 1 means it must be like x plus y is equal to passing through the point 0 comma 1 means this one x plus y is equal to 1 is the required line. So, how many of these will satisfy this x plus y is equal to 1 means third option is the right answer. Okay. Next. You see this integral, integral 0 to pi. Suppose my dear friends, you just take like, yeah, this is i my dear friends. You just apply a plus b minus x, which is integral 0 to pi. This becomes e power minus cos x into sin x by 1 plus cos square x, yeah, into so, pi minus x means you are going to get e power minus cos x plus e power cos x. Yeah, this is the one dx. Fine. Now, if you add these two, this is also i my dear friends. You just take sum of these two, 2 i which is i plus i same integral 0 to pi my dear friends. Now, if you just take sin x common, what will you get? Yeah e power cos x plus e power minus cos x by 1 plus cos square x into e power cos x plus e power minus cos square x. Yeah, these two get cancelled my dear friends. So, 2 i is integral 0 to pi. Why do not you take of course, d x. So, why do not you take cos x as t. So, that minus integral 0 to pi you can write minus sin x by 1 plus t square dx my dear friends. If cos x is t minus sin x dx will become dt. So, minus integral 0 to pi yeah log 1 by dx means dx by 1 plus x square means you will get yeah minus tan inverse t between the limits 0 to pi. So, you can say my dear friends. Mm. So, when you take here you see cos x is equal to t limit should also be changed when x is 0. So, t is pi by 2 yeah when x is pi t is minus 1 you see when x is 0 t is 1 just see my dear friends this is integral 0 to pi no minus t by 1 plus t square yeah you are going to get cos x if i take t minus sin x dx will become dt so my dear friends here i can say yeah this is 2i my dear friends Sin, sin minus sin x dx will become dt. So, this is 1 by 1 plus t square dt, but the limits have substitution is cos x is equal to t my dear friends. Yeah. When x is 0, t is cos 0 1. When x is pi, cos pi is minus 1 and again minus is there. So, you can write it here integral friends integral minus 1 to 1 1 by 1 plus t square dt. Yeah. So, which is my dear friends tan inverse t tan inverse t between the limits minus 1 to 1 tan inverse 1 is pi by 4 minus of minus pi by 4 which is pi by 2 my dear friends. So, 2 i is pi by 2 i is going to be pi by 4 my dear friends simple. Okay. Next this one, this particular integral why do not you take x power 4 common here. So, that 2 plus 3 by x square plus 1 by x power 4 whole power 4 which becomes x square x power 4 into 4 means x power 16 comes out. And here my dear friends you can say after this if you divide with 3 x power 6 13 plus 2 x power 11 dx which is my dear friends 3 comes up okay 3 into 
थ्री बाई एक्स क्यूब प्लस टू बाई एक्स पावर फोर बाई माई डियर फ्रेंड्स टू प्लस थ्री बाई एक्स स्क्वेर प्लस वन बाई एक्स पावर फोर इन टू डी एक्स माई डियर फ्रेंड्स यू जस्ट टेक दिस एज टी यू टेक दिस एज टी माई डियर फ्रेंड्स इंटेग्रल वन बाई टी पावर फोर इज देर या सो वॉट इज इट्स डेरीवेटिव माई डियर फ्रेंड्स वॉट इज इट्स डेरीवेटिव टू थ्री बाई एक्स स्क्वेर दट इज थ्री इंटू माइनस टू बाई एक्स क्यूब प्लस फोर इंटू वन बाई एक्स पावर फोर माइनस फोर बाई एक्स पावर फाइव ओके सो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स थ्री बाई एक्स स्क्वेर यू कैन जस्ट सी हियर इट्स डेरीवेटिव थ्री इंटू माइनस एक्स पावर माइनस एन एक्स पावर एन प्लस वन बाई एन प्लस वन दट इज एन प्लस वन इज माइनस वन माई डियर फ्रेंड्स यू जस्ट राइट हियर सो इफ यू टेक दिस एज दिस द डेरीवेटिव इज this is going to be 3 into i am going to take this as t my dear friends t power 4 derivative 3 into 1 by x square derivative that is n into x to the power of n minus 1 plus x power minus 4 no minus 4 into x power minus 5 that is the point that means i can say my dear friends here hmm. you take this as t 3 into n into x power n minus 1 minus 4 into x power 15. That means, my dear friends, minus 6 by x cube minus 4 by x power 5. Minus 4 by x power 5. Here also, my dear friend, this is not x power 4. This is x power 5 only. So you just multiply with minus 2 and divide with minus 2, my dear friends. Divide with minus 2 and multiply here. So if you take this as t, you are going to get. Minus one by two into integral. This is t power four dt, my dear friends, which is minus one by two into t power minus four means t power minus three by minus three plus c, which is one by six into t power one by three plus c. One by six related. You are having only two options here. That two t power one by three plus c. Okay. you can check you are going to get the answer my dear friends x power 12 just simplify you will get that's it okay you know what is t that is going to be 2 plus 3 by x square 1 by x power 4 okay next my dear friends the area enclosed by the curves y is equal to sin x plus cos x y is equal to mod cos x minus sin x in 0 to pi by 2 you see my dear friends sin x plus cos x at 0 it is 1 At pi by four, one by root two plus one by root two, two by root two, which is root two, and at pi by two, sine ninety one cos ninety zero. So this becomes one. This is sine x plus cos x graph, my dear friends. Now you just take the other graph, sine x modulus of cos x minus sine x. In zero, you know zero to pi by four, you know, my dear friends, which is greater. cos x is greater so modulus of this is nothing but cos x minus sin x itself cos x minus sin x graph yeah at 0 it is 1 at pi by 4 both will be equal and becomes 0 at pi by 4 if you put 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 becomes 0 okay at 0 my dear friends you can say cos 0 1 you see i can say here here let me take so cos x minus sin x with modulus i am going to draw my dear friends yeah when this particular function at 0 cos 0 1 minus this at 1 itself at pi by 4 it is 0 and pi by 4 to at pi by 2 you can just see cos 90 is 0 sin 90 is 1 minus 1 modulus is 1 this is the graph he wants the area enclosed between these two curves As well as x is equal to zero and x is equal to pi by four. So how to find this area? By symmetry, if you could find this area, it is also enough. Two times integral zero to pi by four. Okay, upper curve is nothing but y plus 
see upper curve is sin x plus cos x right yeah minus lower curve lower curve is modulus of this here cos x minus sin x dx cos gets cancelled twice integral 0 to pi by 4 so cos x plus sin x it is you see you can say c gets cancelled 2 sin x this is 2 sin x so which is my dear friends 4 times integral 0 to pi by 4 yeah this is going to be 2 can come out so 4 this is going to be sin x sin x integral you can just take my dear friends yeah I can say here hmm. sin x integral is minus cos x 4 into minus cos x between the limits you can say 0 to pi by 4 yeah 4 into cos pi by 4 1 by root 2 so minus 1 by root 2 minus cos 0 is 1 so plus 1 which is going to be 4 into 1 minus root 2 my dear friends 2 root 2 into root 2 minus 1 is also fine that is all observe the graphs and apply the logic that is it next my dear friends you see y is equal to y of x be the solution of the differential equation this is simple friends you can just write LDE dy by dx plus you just take this side 1 by x log x into y is equal to 2 here it is 2 if you divide with x log x it is 2 okay next my dear friends so LDE integrating factor is e power integral 1 by x into log x dx. So, if you take log x as t 1 by x dx will become dt. So, e power integral yeah, uh, dt by t my dear friends. Yeah, Integral 1 by t is log t. So, e power log t means t my dear friends. Right. Now, t means I have taken log x as t. So, t is nothing but log x. Okay. Now, my dear friend, the general solution is y into integrating factor is equal to okay, y into integrating factor is equal to integral of integrating factor into so you are going to get 2x log x 2x log x dx right. It is going to be my dear friends, huh? You just need to integrate this. So log x square he wants y of e is equal to so you can put x is equal to root e so you will get the condition before that to find the other value he said differential equation then y of e x greater than or equal to 1 we will get my dear friends if you just put e is equal to you are going to put, put my dear friends here x square is equal to so i want the general solution in the sense my dear friends you can just put x is equal to root e you will get this in this one you take x square as t so 2x dx will become dt so log t t square okay my dear friends so this also you can write log of x square and just simplify this is lde so you use the condition and you will get y of e okay fine my dear friends you see this question a bar b bar are given alpha positive if uh, projection of a cross b on a bar projection of a cross b is a vector on the vector say some c bar this is okay given 30 projection of a bar cross b bar on c bar means a a cross b dot c bar by magnitude of you see a cross c dot c bar by magnitude of I can say a cross b into magnitude of c bar ok yeah. So, my dear friends he has said that a cross b box c bar magnitude of a cross b you can see my dear friends magnitude of a cross b you can just see you will get some condition in alpha and here a, a cross b dot c is also triple product you can take the determinant a first 
alpha 1 minus 1 beta is 2 1 minus alpha and this is minus 1 2 minus k yeah given this is equal to 30 my dear friends here you will get another condition connecting alpha and beta you just solve these two you are going to get the answer that is it two conditions we have used what is that so modulus of a cross b then we have seen so how to find you see what is the problem here a cross b and this vector he is asking the angle so alpha is equal to that is it next my dear friends you see a point 4 y z lies on the line segment joining the points it is given so then the distance between r and origin suppose friends r is say 4 y z yes p is 2 minus 3 4 and q is you can say 8 0 10 yes this is the point my dear friends then the distance r from the origin so r r com, point com, is not no, not known completely we have to find that and you can see then the distance of r from the origin okay once you find r you have to find y value also so you can find or square so my dear friends here what did he say this point lies on the line segment that means these three are collinear my dear friends a b c so collinearity of ab is equal to corridor of bc can be applied because they are collinear so ab and bc are same line so their drs must be in proportion so ab drs you just see he said here my dear friends yeah we want distance of r from origin okay so my dear friends here what you can do is this this lies on the line segment joining the points p and q at a distance of r from the origin okay so you see my dear friends here a point r lies on the line segment joining two points p q so p q there might be some line and this is the one okay what did he say here p q are the points if r lies on the same line segment somewhere say r is equal to 4 y z these three points are collinear my dear friends so how to apply collinearity find so p r bar and p q bar they are collinear that means one vector is some number into other vector p r bar you find <coughs> 4 minus 2 2 7 <coughs> 2 minus 4 is minus 2 <coughs> similarly this is 4 minus 2 2 this is y plus 3 friends this is y plus 3 this is 2 minus 4 is minus 2 okay because just we are trying for you see the ratio in which r is going to divide so what we have done that given these three are collinear the slope of qr 2 minus 4 or 4 minus 2 y plus 3 it is and 2 minus 2 my dear friend this is this he has given 4 y z this is just for your kind information friends here let me write in a clear manner you just see friends r point is 4 y z p is 2 minus 3 4 and q is my dear friends 8 0 10 given these three points are collinear what is slope of slope is this drs of rp 4 minus 2 2 y plus 3 z minus 4 here pq are completely known 8 minus 2 6 0 minus of minus 3 3 10 minus 4 is 6 that means 2 1 2 my dear friends so 2 by 2 matched so y plus 3 1 means y must be minus 2 z minus 4 is 2 in the sense z must be either 2 or we can say so z minus 4 is 2 means z is equal to 6 my dear friends yeah you see we have to get 2 here 6 minus 4 is 2 so this is going to be the point r is going to be finally r point i want r x coordinate is going to get it is 4 itself y coordinate minus 2 z coordinate 6 
So, my dear friends, now distance of R from origin root of 36 plus 16, 52 plus 4, 56. So, 2 root 14. Next, my dear friends, there are 5 students in the class, uh, in class 10, okay, there are class 10, there are 5 students, class 11, there are 6 students and 8 in class 12, class 12, 8 students. The number of ways in which 10 students can be selected from them so as to include at least 2 students from each class and at most 5 students from total 11 students of class 10 and 11. That means from each class minimum 2 should be for 10 and 11 together at most 5 he said. So friends from these you can take 2 and you can say 2, 2, 4 and 6. This is one possibility my dear friends. Or some cannot exceed, it is 4. 5 means it can be 2, 3, 5 or it can be 3, 2, 5. That's all. No other way. Because the sum of 9th and 10th should be maximum going to be 5 my dear friends. Now what is, yeah. So the number of ways is 100k he said. So number of ways you find from 5, from 5 you have to select 2, 6, 2, 8, 6, this case plus 5C2 and 6C3 and 8C5 plus this is 5C3 into 6C2 into 8C5. Just multiply these my dear friends, you are going to get the answer. So, the last digit could be maybe some around 8 you are going to get, okay. Next my dear friends, you see S and P are the sum and product of slopes of the lines, it is a pair of straight lines, so homogeneous, both are passing through origin, so S is sum of the slopes, sum of the slopes is, so minus 2H by, if you compare this with AX square plus 2HXY plus by square equal to 0, sum of the roots is minus 2h by b that is 100 by 5 which is 20 and product of the roots is, yeah, uh, you can say 11 by 5, 11 by 5. So now my dear friends, if s and p, now he wants 5 into p plus 20s, 5p is 11 plus 5 into 20 into s yes means see 100 by 5 you can say 5s is going to be 100 you can say my dear friends yeah so you can say here 5s is 100 and uh, you want 100s because this is 5p plus 20s right otherwise you can write my dear friends yeah s is equal to s is equal to 20 and 20 s is equal to 400 okay s is going to be some p is actually p is given here 11 by 5 into 5 11 you are going to 20 into 500 s you want into 500 s means you have to write you can say this is s is going to be uh, we can say 20, 20 into 100, 2000. So my dear friends, this is 2000 plus 11, 2011 by 2011, which is 1 my dear friends, the answer. The area of the region formed by, earlier there is no restriction except the quadratic, why do not you treat it like y is equal to quadratic by 4, you also treat this like, this is the line. So, y is equal to 6x by 4, 3x by 2 plus 4, 6 that 24, y is equal to. Now, both are expressed in terms of quadratic subtract 3 by 4x square minus 3 by 2 into x minus 6, my dear friends. So, you compare this with ax square plus bx plus c, okay. Now, you just find delta. Delta is equal to b square minus 4ac. 
b square is 9 by 4 minus 4 a c minus 6. So, 9 by 4 plus 18 which is 72 81 by 4 my dear friends delta. Now, final answer is delta power 3 by 2 by 6 a square which is 81 by 4 means 9 by 2 whole square 9 cube by 2 cube 8 by 6 into a square is going to be what is a here friends 3 by 4 which is 9 by 4 square 16 2 cube 2 times 2 3 times this is 9 power 9 cube gets cancelled in the sense 27 27 will be left 27 by 3 is equal to 9 my dear friends. So, 1 is both can be treated like quadratic subtract and apply the shortcut you will get the answer. Next my dear friends the minimum distance between the two points P1 and P2 while considering P1 on one circle P2 on the second circle. Simple my dear friends you just observe for both the circles two center C1 C2 you find two radii R1 R2 you find ok. Yes, because here the center is 5 comma 5 radius is 3 ok radius is 3. Here the other one is here you can say 12 comma 5 13 yeah this is going to be my dear friend this is 12 comma 5. So, 169 minus this 9 this is also having radius 3 my dear friends yeah. So, I mean to say here these are two circles and you find the distance between the two centers my dear friends 5 comma 5 this is going to be 12 comma 5. The distance between centers is 7 my dear friends whereas this is going to be 5 this is going to be you can say 3 3 that means there are two circles so which are not intersecting. So, what is the minimum distance possible this distance is possible distance between their centers is d minus r1 minus r2 you do you are going to get d is nothing but now you can see my dear friends distance between their centers you can observe yeah 7 minus of 3 minus 3 which is 1 is the final answer given circles right that is the minimum distance possible 1 unit. Next the number of integral values of k for which this line intersects this particular circle if a line intersects a circle in the sense perpendicular distance from the center onto the line d must be d must be strictly less than r am I correct Perpen less than the radius what is the center here 1 comma 2 radius here 1 because 1 plus 4 minus 4 which is 1 my dear friends. So, perpendicular distance from the center 1 comma 2 onto the given line this is 3 plus 8 minus k by 5. D is less than the radius of this is going to be my dear friends yeah radius radius of this is going to be 1 my dear friends. So, you just need to solve 11 minus 5 less than 5 11 minus k is less than 5 that is k minus 11 less than 5. So, 11 minus 5 is 6 less than k less than you see 11 plus 5 is equal to 16. So, my dear friends this is k minus 11. So, I can say here the number of integers between them 6 cannot be taken 16 cannot be taken you can say 7 8 9 10 4 that side 5. 5 plus 4 there will be 9 ok. Next my dear friends yeah the distance of the point from the plane along the line you see I have given the shortcut directly. So, from point to a line it is not perpendicular line he is asking us to find the distance must be measured parallel to this. So, the drs you convert into dc is 2 by 3 2 by 3 1 by 3 my dear friends these are the drs ok. Now, I already told you if you want the distance of this onto the plane you just substitute 9 minus 2 minus 4 plus 1 by my dear friends 4 by you see a is going to be 3 into cos theta 2 by 3 
and b is going to be minus 1 into sin theta is 2 by 3 and c is going to be 4 into I can say yeah 1 by 3 the dc's you have to write modulus of a x 1 plus b y 1 plus c z 1 by a cos alpha plus b cos beta plus c cos beta will give you the exact answer which is good my dear friends 4 by you can say yeah mm. you can just find this distance this is 2 this is 6 by 3 minus 2 by 3 plus 4 by 3 which is 4 by 8 by 3 so 24 by 8 yeah this is going to be my dear friends that is all just simplify my dear friends or else you can also find the general point on this line because dr's are lone point is known you can substitute it in the plane you will get t value so you can find the distance that is also fine next my dear friends the arithmetic mean between mean uh, n arithmetic means are inserted between a and 100 between a and 100 n arithmetic means are inserted so d is equal to b minus a by n plus 1 yes right because between a and 10 you see a and 100 so n arithmetic means are inserted common difference is this now the first mean means a plus d my dear friends by the last mean is 100 minus d this is going to be 1 is to 7 that means you will get one equation connecting a and d 7 a plus 7 d is equal to 100 a minus d so which is my dear friends i can say 8 d is equal to 97 a yeah you just see the simplification my dear friends you see he said that the ratio of the first mean that is a plus d to the last mean last mean is 100 minus 100 minus d friends a plus d 100 minus d is equal to 1 by 7 7 a plus 7 d is equal to 100 a minus d so i can say my dear friends this is 97 see 93 right 93 a is equal to 8 d my dear friends okay so you will get a and d in the same way d and a can be replaced now i can say you can observe here calculation properly 7 a plus 7 d is equal to 100 minus d you can observe so 7 a plus 8 d is equal to 100 this is one equation my dear friends second equation he has given a plus n here d you can eliminate by writing you see 7 a plus 7 into you see sorry 8 into d means you can write 100 minus a by n plus 1 this is equal to he has given this is the one my dear friends 7 a plus 8 d is 100 you got a linear equation in a and n alone here also you got a plus n is equal to 33 if you solve you will get n value my dear friends which is 23 just solve it next you see this particular summation this one you can write sigma k is equal to 1 to 10 you know its factors 1 by k square uh, you see k square minus k plus 1 minus 1 by k square plus k plus 1 so first minus second will give you 2k so you write half 2k now my dear friends if you just keep expanding this k is equal to 1 means 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 plus my dear friends 1 by 3 minus you can say put k is equal to 2 my dear friends 4 plus 2 6 1 7 1 by 7 plus and so on when you put n is equal to 10 the last term you will get uh, 100 110 111 you are going to get because second first second first second first get cancelled you will get 1 minus 1 by 11 which is I can say 100 by 11 my dear friends which is going to be you can say half into this is m by n since the half this half continues throughout the calculation 
so you can write half which is 55 by triple 1 my dear friends so m plus n is going to be 166 166 is the answer okay next my dear friends m is the slope of the common tangent to the curve suppose friends y is equal to mx plus c is the tangent to both the curves since it is tangent to the ellipse c square is equal to a square m square plus b square since it is tangent to the circle c square is equal to a square into 1 plus m square this is the one this must happen 16 m square minus 12 m square is 4 m square is 12 minus 9 is 3 so he wants m square is equal to 3 by 4 so m must be plus or minus root 3 by 2 okay of course he wants m square 12 m square which is 9 my dear friends multiply both sides with the 12 here so which is going to be 9 9 is the answer next the sum of the squares of the reciprocals of roots of alpha and beta of this particular equation that means 1 by alpha square plus 1 by beta square is 15 my dear friends that means alpha square plus beta square by alpha square beta square is equal to 15 we have formula for alpha square plus beta square in a quadratic b square minus 2ac by a square b square minus 2ac by a square this is c by a whole square that is c square by a square is given as 15 my dear friends so lambda square is equal to 9 that is the point so lambda can be plus 3 or minus 3 okay fine alpha cube plus beta cube are here can you find alpha cube plus beta cube so alpha plus beta whole cube alpha plus beta is minus lambda by 3 whole cube minus 3 alpha beta okay 3 alpha beta is minus 1 by 3 into alpha plus beta which is again minus lambda by 3 okay you see alpha a cube plus b cube means a plus b whole cube minus 3 a b into a plus b i have written that is minus lambda cube by 3 so this is minus these two get cancelled minus lambda by 3 my dear friends so you will get minus lambda cube by 3 minus lambda by 3 so here lambda can be 3 or minus 3 anyhow i am going to square again if you put 3 my dear friends this is minus 9 minus 3 is minus 12 yes am i correct so this is lambda is 3 means 9 minus 1 you are going to get because 3 by 3 is 1 this is 10 100 into 6 just check the calculation once once you get this here into its a square is also there my dear friends its a square into 6 again so this is lambda square is 9 my dear friends alpha cube plus beta cube is alpha plus beta whole cube minus 3 alpha beta which is minus 1 by 3 into alpha plus beta is going to be yeah minus lambda by 3 so you just simplify my dear friends this is minus lambda cube by 27 this is what we are getting minus lambda cube by 27 these two get cancelled minus of minus plus that is minus lambda by 3 it is if you put lambda is 3 this becomes minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 square is 4 4 6 are 24 if you take minus 3 also you will get 2 same answer so the answer is going to be 24 my dear friends that's all so it's undoubtedly comparatively it is easy paper right all the best